ever. Somebody just asked me recently, don't you think there's different levels in heaven and some people will be closer to the glory than others? I said, I don't even go there. I don't share my beliefs on none of that stuff because it doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with everyday purpose. It has nothing to do with faith. and has nothing to do with the pure motive of loving God because he first loved you. You don't go harder so you get a better seat. You go harder because you gave your whole life to him and you love him and you're laying it down. For his glory. (laughs) Come on, guys. We're funny in the church, man. We pray for this blessing stuff all the time. I mean, we're front parking, green light, shakarabaka setaba. Oh, shadabababa. You know, and they go right on through. Woo! But here's what you forget: when yours is green, somebody's is red, but you don't even think about that. And you come home and say, I'm blessed, I caught every green light. What about those reds? Every intersection you were blessed in, somebody was red. So what are they? When you're parked in the front, somebody's in the back. It seems to me that Christians ought to get some reds and park back. It's amazing how we've been trained to think for ourselves in the gospel when the first prerequisite of the gospel is deny yourself. We've made it all about blessings and provision and breakthrough and fever. You have all that through the risen Christ. When all your sins were forgiven and life came inside of you. And the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead came and set up home in you. That sounds like a lot to me. Now I wonder why he's here. He's not just here so I get a pay raise. He's here that so on my job I look like Jesus. Yeah. He's not just here so I find favor and get a promotion. He's here so I look like Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And when they're unjust, look like Jesus. When they don't appreciate you, look like Jesus. When they persecute you, look like Jesus. When your family ain't running together like you were hoping, look like Jesus. When your spouse is having a troubled season, look like Jesus. Don't call Pastor Jeff and say, you know, I'm just getting tired. How long is a guy supposed to hold up? I mean, she's just putting so much weight on me. I can only bear it so long. Brother, you really need to pray. We need a breakthrough. She don't change soon. I don't know what I'm going to do. Could you imagine Jesus having that line with the Father? You know, if these guys don't get it soon, Father. I mean, I healed all their sick in Capernaum, and, and now they're wondering what devil possessed me to do it. And I fed their belly and they just came back for more food. They didn't even really want to hear what I said. And when I told them straight, they all walked away. I mean, I'll tell you what, I I don't know if I can take much more. Like if they didn't change by now, they're probably not going to change. I'm starting to wonder what we see in these people. I mean, maybe I should come back. See, if you put that conversation in Jesus' mouth and it sounds foolish, it's just as foolish in yours. You're made for his image and as he is, so are you in the world. So if he's not saying it, why are we? Because we were taught that way another way. We were taught that way another way by another way. He's the way. So the lie tutored us from the time we were born because we were born into Adam. So we were tutored by false wisdom our whole lives, taught by false teaching. Nobody taught you. You didn't have to go to school to get angry. You didn't have to pass a course on jealousy. It came with the package of thinking for yourself. Jealousy makes sense when you're thinking for you. Anger surely makes sense when you're thinking for you. Discouragement really has a place to land when you're thinking for you. Despair, anxiety, fear. When you're the center of the motivation, all those things are alive. But when you deny yourself, And you understand you weren't created for you. You were created for his image. You were created for his glory. And you were created to love. And you get alone with him and you commune that. And and Holy Spirit starts doing stuff in you. And you're not biting your lip to change. He's changing you because you believe and desire. And you communicate that with him. And all of a sudden you're changed. Wow. Well, that sounds like a pretty good day right there. Almost across the board, we ask each other how we're doing and we share the two biggest trials in our life and say, keep me in prayer. I'm just saying. I'm not being mean. It shows something. 
Because out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth's speaking. So we're only doing as good as things are working out. No, you're doing as good as he is inside of you. You're a lot stronger than the weakness around you. Yeah? Christ in you. Firstborn among many brethren, predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son. The things he did, you'll do if you believe. Anyone says he abides in me, ought to walk even as he walked. They're all scriptures, by the way. (laughs) Yeah, they are. We could back up. I could tell you where they're all at. I know where all those are at. I just shared them all quick to save time because I only have six sessions. (laughs) I'm not joking. (laughs) It's not a joke.